Jeremy S. Cook here, and in this video, I'm going to go over how you can remotely trigger a camera using a passive infrared sensor and an optocoupler. This would be great for capturing wildlife or anytime you want to just trigger a camera automatically. And the great thing about these optocouplers is they can be used in any sort of situation, not just, not just DSLRs. In this situation, they're acting almost like a relay and using the stereo plug, just connecting the base and the tip together to get it to fire the, the trigger. Electronics wise, it's fairly simple. I modeled everything in Fusion 360 to get everything together correctly. You can see kind of a shroud there as well as an opening for the, for the female connectors that'll go in. And that ring actually goes around the, the stock lens of my Canon DSLR. I also drew it out in 2D just to get kind of an idea of what would trigger, trigger it with the shroud. With that, I went ahead and printed it out to see what would happen. Put the passive infrared sensor in the printed shroud and then hook these little wires up and hooked everything up to a breadboard to make sure it would work correctly. So there the red light is triggering when it sees something, so that's exactly how it should be working. And there's no Arduino or anything involved, it's just the passive infrared sensor and the battery and then everything else. Here you have the, the layout, you've got the passive infrared sensor, 6 volt battery and a PC817 optocoupler. There's also a resistor going from the PIR output to the optocoupler because it's got an LED on it, you just don't want to overload that too much. So there I am soldering everything together. Had the little 6 volt battery and the nice double coin cell battery thing. For the connector I needed a 2.5 millimeter stereo jack so I just cut off a male to female adapter. I guess I'll, I guess I've got the female adapter somewhere. And from there it was working pretty well. Put a zip tie on here to kind of make a strain relief so that if it got pulled, it wouldn't disrupt everything. If this looks familiar, it's this very similar setup to my Arduino Nano Intervalometer. I'll put a link to that in the description and on the upper right hand corner, there'll be a little note where you can find it. Worked, worked really well, but it's a little bit more complicated circuit, obviously, because you've got an Arduino, whereas this is extremely simple. It's an extremely simple way to do it, and could be applied to many different things. So everything slides on nicely there. It, it's a nice, nice slip fit and triggers when I put my hand on it. And if you see me walking in front of it, it could be like wildlife or something if in other applications, if you wanted to capture that. Interestingly, when I threw a basketball in front of it, it actually didn't pick that up. And I'm thinking probably the basketball was about the same temperature as the ambient temperature, so probably the passive infrared sensor couldn't see it that well. I also tried putting a secondary shroud in it so it would more capture the stuff that it was looking at. And that worked pretty well. You can see me here, my hands above it and somewhat in front, but until it gets directly in front of it, it doesn't, it doesn't fire. So yeah, here's some pictures that I took. Really beautiful. There's one of the walls, one of my out of focus hands. It's really, uh, really pretty good. So if you enjoyed taking this kind of photo and you want to do it yourself, I'll put the put the files for it on GitHub. Or if you want to leave me a comment, please do. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. Or best of all, if you want to subscribe, that'd be awesome. So thanks for watching. This is Jeremy S. Cook signing off.